Hello, and welcome to this film about the mole. It's the second in a series of films about quantitative chemistry, but unlike the first one, we are going to start to do some calculations here. And hopefully by the end of this film, you'll know what Avogadro's number is. This is an important number to remember. And what we mean by a mole of any substance. And then, if we represent these two quantities by capital L and little n, you'll be able to relate these quantities to one another using another symbol, capital N. Okay, so let's start off by asking ourselves what we mean by a mole. Now, a mole of any substance is defined as being um, the amount of that substance that contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of that substance. Okay, now this could be any substance, right? It could be something that we can see, or it could be something very small, like an atom that we can't see. In fact, it's more useful if it's something very small, because then this number becomes quite manageable. Okay, it's also called Avogadro's number. It's named after an Italian chap who is doing some very important experiments with gases. And um, anyway, he, uh, so if we um, know that this number is 6.02 times 10 to 23, and we want to have some idea of the scale of that number, um, well, let's think of something that we deal with on a regular basis. So if I take drink cans and I had a mole of them, so that is to say I've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of them. Remember, a mole is just a number, just like a dozen is a number or a score is a number. Okay, so if I had a mole of drink cans, I'd have this many of them, 6.02 times 10 to 23. And if I decided to stand them side by side, I'd find that I could cover the entire surface of the earth in these cans, not just land, but water as well. And in actual fact, once I'd done that, I'd find I'd still have quite a lot of cans left over and I could make another layer covering the entire planet. And I could make a third. And in fact, if I approximated the surface area of the Earth to be about 5.1 times 10 to the 8 square kilometers. And if I was to make another approximation, which was that the surface area doesn't increase significantly every time I add another layer of cans to it, then I'd be able to keep stacking cans until I had a stack of cans well over 400 kilometers thick. This really is an incredibly large number, okay, to deal with normal things, but we don't normally use it for counting normal things. We normally use it for counting atoms. So, not only do we normally use it for counting atoms, we normally uh, represent it by a symbol. So here is symbol for Avogadro's number. It's a capital L. This symbol here, capital N, we're going to use this to mean the number of particles. As I say, this could be the number of oranges in a mole of oranges. It could be the number of planets in a mole of planets. It really doesn't matter. We're normally talking about small things like atoms and ions, and molecules. This symbol here, which comes up in lots of different contexts, is the number of moles. Now, if I was to say to you, how many particles would you have if you had two moles of them? And I was to tell you that one mole had 6.02 times 10 to the 23 then most people would be able to go, oh, well, well, I'd just take that number, the two, the two moles of stuff that you've told me about, and I'd multiply it, I'd double it, I'd double, sorry, I wouldn't double it, I'd double 6.02 times 10 to 23, because I know that's how many there are in one mole. You told me you had two. Okay, so in other words, I'm saying to you, find capital N, and you're saying, well, common sense tells me that that's the number of moles you've just told me times Avogadro's number. And if you weren't very comfortable at rearranging that expression, finding the number of moles to be equal to capital N over L, then simply by working this formula out by common sense, you could construct a triangle like this one and say that if I'm trying to find capital N, I just hide this and I'm left with little n times capital L. If I'm trying to find little n, I hide it. I'm left with capital N divided by capital L. Okay, so try and remember that when you're asked about formulae or when you're having to use formulae, if you can't remember them, you can normally figure them out using common sense. The triangles, I have to say, do save you doing any kind of uh, rearrangement of formulae. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to try and use some of these formulae to do some calculations. 
we're being asked to find the number of calculators in two moles of calculators, the number of moles, of, the number of sodium sodium atoms in 0.025 moles of sodium. So every time I'm being given the number of moles, right? And I'm being asked to find the number of things in that number of moles. So in other words, I'm being asked to find the number of particles, capital N. And I know from common sense, or from my triangle, or from memory, that this is the number of moles multiplied by Avogadro's number. So here I'd just be simply doing 6.02 times 10 to the 23 multiplied by 2. And that's 1.204 times 10 to the 24. You don't have to do these things in your head, you can do them on your calculator. In fact, I'd be tempted to do this one on my calculator. But again, I've got the number of moles, which is 0 0.025, and multiply it by 6 times 10 to the 23. Sorry, 6.02, I should say. I'll get into bad habits. And what would that be? That would be uh, sodium, so 1.5 times 10 to the 22 sodium atom. Large number of sodium atoms. Now, if I had 3.6 moles of nitrogen, I need to remember the formula of nitrogen is N2. So the number of moles of, or the number of atoms I have in a nitrogen molecule is twice as large as the number of moles of, or the number of nitrogen molecules themselves. So if I had one molecule, I'd have two atoms. So in other words, this is going to be 7.2 moles of atoms. So I take my 7.2 and I multiply it by the number of particles in a mole of a substance. And what's that? Well, that equals 4.34 times 10 to the 24 atoms. Difficult to do that one if I don't remember what the formula of nitrogen is. Now I'm being asked how many molecules there are in 4 moles of nitrogen. Well, remember that N2 is a molecule. And that is one molecule. If I had four moles of those molecules, I'd simply have four times the number of molecules in a mole of molecules, which is six times 10 to the 23. Remember, this is the number of anything in the mole of anything at all. Okay, so what's that? Well, that is 2.408 times 10 to the 24. And that just leaves me with this thing here. And if I haven't learned my iron list, and I can't figure out that the formula of calcium carbonate is CaCO3, then this becomes a pretty much impossible problem. Because if I don't know the formula, I don't know how many atoms there are in one formula unit of calcium carbonate. There are actually one, two, three, four, five. So if I had one mole of calcium carbonate, I'd have five moles of atoms. I've got 10 moles of calcium carbonate, so I'm going to have 50 moles of atoms. I'm being asked about atoms, so 50 times the number of atoms in one mole of atoms, which is that. And that equals 3.01 times 10 to the 25 atoms. Okay, now we're kind of flipping the problem around a little bit, and now are being asked to find the number of moles. Here we're being told the number of particles that we have. Okay. So this time, I'm going to use the formula the number of moles is equal to the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. In this first question, I'm already told how many moles of water there are. So this question is saying, find the number of moles of... I'm already told the number of moles. But remember that water has the formula H2O. So there are three atoms in every molecule of water. If I had one mole of water molecules, I'd have three moles of atoms. But I've got two moles of water, so therefore I've got six moles of water. Okay, if I've got 12.04 times 10 to the 23 atoms, then capital N is 12.04 times 10 to the 23. Oops, 10 to the 23. And if I divide that by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, those two things cancel. These, This is simply twice as big as that. So there are Two moles. Two moles of potassium if I have that many atoms. Now if I have 3,000 oxygen atoms, on the other hand, because I know that oxygen is O2, I'm only going to be able to make 1,500 molecules. If, if I'm being asked about oxygen, that's what I'm being asked about. How many 
moles of oxygen do I have if I've got 3,000 atoms? Well, I've got 1,500 molecules. I divide that by 6.0232 times 10 to the 23. And what do I find? I find that that's 2.49 times 10 to the minus 21 oxygen molecules. And finally, if I've got 23 trillion ions, now that's 23, and not a million, not a billion, but a trillion, so if I put the decimal point in here, this is 2.3 times 10 to the 13. So the number of particles that I have, number of ions, is 2.3 times 10 to the 13. So if I divide that by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, then that equals 3.82 times 10 to the minus 11 moles of ions. But sodium chloride, and again, if I can't figure out the formula, I'm going to be in trouble in this question, so the ion list is really, really important. This formula has two ions in it. So if I have that many moles of ions, then surely I'm going to be able to make half that number of moles of sodium chloride, which would be 1.91 times 10 to the minus. Okay, been through a few examples there. If you've got any questions about them, or if you'd um, simply like to clarify your understanding of anything that was in this film, please feel free to come and ask me, or to post a comment on YouTube.